from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father Dan Donovan. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from the Picaday families from Oakville, Ontario and Afaretta, Georgia. This Mass is offered for the eternal repose of the soul of Thomas Picaday in thanksgiving for blessings received, for the personal intentions of the Picaday family and for the intentions of the Daily TV Mass community. Our thanks to the Picaday families for making it possible for tens of thousands of people across Canada, the U.S., and around the world to begin a new week by sharing in this sacred celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifests your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, Still, we pray your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. And the third new moon, after the Israelites had gone out of the land of Egypt, and that very day, they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud in order that, that the people may hear when I speak with you, and so trust you ever after. When Moses had told the words of the people to the Lord, the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and prepare for the third day, because on the third day, the Lord will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning, as well as a thick cloud on the mountain, and a blast of a trumpet so loud that all the people who were in the camp trembled. Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God they took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended upon it in fire. The smoke went up like the smoke of a kiln, while the whole mountain shook violently. As the blast of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses would speak and God would answer him in thunder. When the Lord descended upon Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, the Lord summoned Moses to the top of the mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Blessed are you, O Lord, 
God of our ancestors, and blessed is your glorious and holy name. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, and to be extolled and highly glorified forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, and to be extolled and highly exalted forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne on the cherubim. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven to be sung and glorified forever. Glory and praise forever. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples came and asked Jesus, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He answered, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The reason I speak to them in parables is that seeing they do not perceive, and hearing they do not listen, nor do they understand. With them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that says, you will indeed listen, but never understand. And you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes, so that they might not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn and I would heal them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The passage I just read is part of a much longer section in the Gospel of Matthew, in which the evangelist has brought together eight parables of Jesus. The focus in today's reading is on a question that was put to Jesus by the disciples. Why, they ask, do you speak to the people in parables? There's a sharp distinction in the reading between those who do not accept the teaching of Jesus and those who do. The disciples believe in Jesus and in his message. In response to their question, Jesus quotes a phrase from Isaiah, which seems to describe the situation Matthew is confronting. This people's heart, the prophet says, has grown dull. Their eyes are hard of hearing. Their ears are hard of hearing. And they have shut their eyes so that they might not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and understand with their heart and mind. Having underlined the failure of the people to respond in a positive way to Jesus and his message, Matthew contrasts them with the disciples. To them, Jesus says, Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, 
what they hear. You know, all that Jesus is saying here, he's not thinking of our ordinary everyday experience of sight or sound, nor is he talking of the things that we see and hear in our home, our workplace, and on the streets on which we walk. He's talking about what the saints later will describe as our inner senses, senses which focus on the deeper and more significant dimensions of what we see and hear, on things of a spiritual nature. It is from them that we often find ourselves today cut off. The mystery at work in our very different responses to Jesus is what the tradition came to call grace. It is pure gift. It touches and transforms us from within so that we are able to perceive the world that lies below and beyond our ordinary experience. The parables of Jesus seem to have a double function, one positive and the other negative. The emphasis in today's reading is on the parable's exclusionary quality. Some will hear them and not understand the moral and religious message they contain. For others, however, it is quite the opposite. To them, their message seems more or less self-evident. If it is the case that for some, the parables create a difficulty for our understanding of what they are trying to say to us, for others, the parables can be enormously helpful in discerning what Jesus is saying and how we might apply it to our lives. One of my favorite parables, one to which I've come back repeatedly over the years, is that of the prodigal son. It is such a powerful and beautifully told story that it brings home to us in the form of a narrative, fundamental human and Christian attitudes and values. After I was ordained a priest in 1962, I spent a year in a parish in Toronto before going to Europe for graduate studies. Included in my responsibilities that year were weekly visits to the parish school as well as to the local teacher's college. In both classes, we read and talked about the parable of the prodigal son. I asked both groups who they thought was the most important person in the parable. All but one of the grade three children said, the father. The future teachers, on the other hand, mostly identified with the prodigal, while a few said the father. The one child who said the son, as I learned later, had been abandoned by her father and was being brought up by her mother on her own. Many of the future teachers, on the other hand, saw themselves in the prodigal. No one in the two groups mentioned the older brother, and yet the more one thinks about it, the more striking and challenging his attitude is. Some identify with his complaining about the warm and generous welcome the father gave his younger son. Far from rejoicing in the return of the younger sibling, the older brother allows himself to be overwhelmed by a sense of being cheated or of hurt or in some way of not being treated fairly. The older son's response to what the father has done reveals his inability to forget himself, to rise above his rights, and simply rejoice in the fact that, as the father puts it, that brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The father and his two sons, and the relations they have to one another, provide material for repeated meditation and prayer. Many of us can see ourselves, or at least something of ourselves, in one or more of the characters in the parable. It's and other parables like it hold up a mirror, as it were, and invite us to reflect on our own attitudes in relation to those of the characters in the parable. Many of the parables begin with the phrase, the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of heaven, is like something, something that Jesus draws from everyday life. It is like a treasure hidden in a field, 
a pearl of great price, a mustard seed which, so small, grows into a tree, or a net thrown into the sea that catches fish of every kind. The phrase, the kingdom or reign of God, points to God himself. It is God and God's intentions for human life that are at the heart of the preaching of Jesus. And so it is with the parables like that of the prodigal son. In painting the portrait of the father that he does, Jesus is telling us what God is like. He is compassionate, merciful, and forgiving. He's always ready to welcome us back when we have turned away from him and have lost our way. The parable of the prodigal son and others like it reveal their message on the levels of both nature and grace. Not only are they beautifully written, but they also offer us insight into the mystery of God and of his intentions for the world and for human life, especially as these are revealed in the life, teaching, and destiny of Jesus. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all those in our daily TV Mass prayer intentions book, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel isolated and alone, may God calm their fears and lead them into peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout the world, especially in Africa and in Ukraine, let us pray to the Lord. For people facing serious health problems, that God will be with them and give them courage and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, for his good health and for the success of his efforts to renew the life of the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends and for those who have died this past night, that they will be brought to eternal life in God, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for us. By the mingling of this water and wine, become partakers of his divinity, became partaker of our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Gracious God, wash me from my sins. Amen. Cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the root of all these holy church. Grant us, so merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open for us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. 
And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink his cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul will be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.